Welcome to Outback Outdoors. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos. The mountains and valleys of Northwest Colorado compose some of the most spectacular terrain in all of North America. The aspens, oak brush, and pine trees dot the mountainside creating a mosaic of amazing habitat. Habitat that supports the world's largest elk herd. An elk herd that draws in thousands of archery hunters each September. During most archery hunts, just finding the elk proves to be the primary challenge. But during this hunt, finding the elk was never an issue. As each day, we witnessed hundreds of animals migrate from their beds in the mountaintops down to the food sources in the valley below. With hundreds of eyes, ears, and noses on alert, we could have never guessed that having too many elk to hunt would be our primary obstacle. Listen up, I've rode this mountain 70 years I've been alive Choked on rocks and rattlesnakes, a wonder I've survived And don't think I haven't had a bronc like you try me Every time he thinks a monster is hiding around a tree Well, the monster's on your back, son, better try to understand the cowboy that you're fighting now was born to this here land. One day you learn your scars and all the fearlessness you lack. Don't worry about the things that you can't see. The monster's on your back. And there's a monster on your back. What these elk are doing is they're coming off of here down into the bottom. Right. And then they're walking their way back up and then coming back up the hill and coming up in here in their bed and right here. Mm -hmm. Last night everything got up. At four o'clock they were up and everything was moving that way really, really slow. All right. Well, I our think that's the smartest bet, plan. Our very best bet is to try to leave them alone in the feeding. Right. Or we could jump in the ranger and run up here on top and look at some of this too. I need somebody with bigger boy muscles than me. On this adventure, we were invited to hunt this amazing Colorado property managed by good friend Quentin Smith, owner of QRS Outdoor Specialties. He had completed many habitat projects throughout the property that added cover, water, prime forage, and created a paradise for rutting elk. And some of them turn and come down below you and come down through the hydrax stuff all the way down. Mm -hmm. And then some of them come on the ridge line up above you and then either dropped into you or wherever. Isn't it amazing that that many elk can disappear? And they flat disappear. Tanner Vernon, one of our field producers, joined us on this hunt. He also had a bull tag in his pocket, if time and opportunity allowed. We took the opportunity early in this hunt to hang trail cameras and observe from a distance what the elk were naturally doing. A key to success in any hunt is understanding the complexity of wild animals, where they bed, where they feed, and their travel routes between the two. Now, knowing where the majority of elk were bedding and feeding, we felt our best plan of action was to intercept the elk herd in transition, rather than risk pressuring them and possibly pushing them out of the area. We got in here about, oh, about one and uh, popped up a blind, got it all set up, got it brushed in. We got a wallow right here in front of us and uh, Q's told us that he 
saw elk bed up this ridge earlier, so they went up there this morning and bedded, so we should be in a pretty good spot. Hopefully they'll come on by and give us a shot. It's hot. It's really hot. We came into this wallow and set up this blind today. And it took a little bit longer than we thought that this is the same spot we sat last year when I was uh, hunting with a recurve and I missed that bull right out there. So with the heat and the amount of elk that have moved in, we're hoping that they get primed up and we can go and run a gun for them because that's a lot more fun. Tanner is probably a half a mile over on another wallow. Hopefully, as these elk come through, they're going to split up. Heck, we might even both get a shot at a bull. You never know. I think that's where that vehicle came from down in there. It's really amazing, at least for me and a lot of bow hunters I know, that this is what you wait for all year long. And every year, September to me is, it's one of my favorite months of the year. And you dream about getting into an elk fest, a, a, you know, a bowl where you have three or four bulls just cranking hot to trot, you got cows mealing, and it's just good to be back in Colorado, high country, in September. So it's day three, um, about 4.30 in the afternoon, and uh, we got set up in this blind. We had a bunch of elk uh, in this field this morning, and they were all piled up like, I don't know, 250, 300 head, maybe more. And so they all went up a couple draws down. They went up and they kind of spread out. And now they're bedded for, you know, a good three quarters of a half mile. They're bedded across deer spread out.
as you can probably hear, the wind has really picked up this morning. We got back up on our high spot to glass, and these elk are doing what elk do, something different every day. Yeah. But we've got them in a draw that we think we can make a play on. I think it's day four, day, I don't remember how many days. <laughs> they're starting we, to blur together. It, they're starting to <laughs> run together. And we're starting to get a bit frustrated just at the fact that we're getting schooled. And to be here this many days and to yet have a real decent encounter because there's just so many elk, it's, it's frustrating. But uh, we're trying to hunt it smart so that we don't blow them all out of here. But they're starting to break up a little bit. So we're, we found a really nice bull and we watched where he went to. So what we're gonna try and do, I think, is we're gonna actually get a, we took a panoramic of the side ridge and we're gonna go back and we're gonna bring it into the, uh, in a Photoshop and <laughs> we're gonna label it so that we can have somebody up here as these elk start to move, there's just so many elk that we can communicate back and forth as to where we need to be to try and set up an ambush and, uh, and get in the middle of some of the action. Day four, day five, I don't know, one of those days. We gotta do something, we gotta get aggressive. All right, let's move. We're running out of days. Got a storm ro rolling in tonight, and uh, this has been tough. Like I've said before, it's tough because of the sheer number of elk and uh, the inability to get where we need to, to be. They, we've tried to, to move in position and just have never guessed right. So we're tonight we got a group located, and we're going to try and move in and try and get in their way, if, if that makes sense. We'll do a little bit of call and see what we can do, but we gotta get aggressive, we don't have much time. We gotta get something done. Let's move, let's move up around the corner.
Last night, we let that bull sit. It was raining. Storm moved in. We knew it was going to be cool enough. He's going to keep fine. Um, there was a lot of elk in there, too. We didn't want to booger all the elk out of there, so we snuck out of there. Um, the shot looked good, but we're pretty confident. Um, but until you have your, your hands on the antlers, you don't, uh, you know. I, I didn't sleep very good last night. This is some thick stuff. If it punched in and came out and stayed there for a while, you know what I mean? But you're still talking about that should be double lung. So he's definitely on this trail. With the volatile environment that surrounds hunting and bow hunting today, we as hunters in general represent everybody in the community. With all the eyes and ears of the media today looking in, trying to pick out things that are wrong about the heritage and the traditions that we love, the taking of our own game, the chasing of our own adventure. We must be responsible. And it's difficult because if you've ever been in the mountains with a bow in your hand or a rifle, things happen. And hunting is a violent sport. Something has to die for you to be able to fill your freezer. We owe it to that animal and to our heritage to exhaust every avenue to recover that animal. I think we just got one lung and an animal can go a long ways on one lung. He was still climbing at a hundred yards. And I don't know how that could be possible. It doesn't make sense. I didn't, the shot was good. We looked at it on video. And you do everything right. You, you, you practice hours, shoot every day, work on your bow hunting skills, your calling skills, your, to make that one moment in time, uh, that magical moment count. And last night, I'm guilty of maybe overconfidence. I'm guilty of maybe perhaps I counted some chickens before they were hatched. Got on the blood trail this morning and found the arrow. Found some blood. Now, we knew it was raining. It rained all night long. It was even raining this morning a little bit. That didn't help us. But as we went further and further and still found little traces of blood, we thought, he shouldn't go that. He shouldn't be going this far, uphill. And your heart just sinks. And so... You continue to scour and you continue to do your due diligence more than your due diligence and you get help and and you grid and you do all these different things and he's not there i i don't know if this will ever even make a show but this is real when you release an arrow it's final i mean you're a projectile with a tried and true broadhead and you've practiced and you put it in the spot you want and you expect to be able to rejoice in a freezer full of meat and, and the thrill of the chase, the adventure. And then it's gone. So for those of you who might look down on this situation have compassion understand that bull hunting is a full contact sport to be successful something has to die and in this situation we weren't able to find it Thanks for watching Outback Outdoors. We encourage you to comment below and as always, like, 
subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos.